This is a GCSE biology presentation looking at plant diseases. To get started, what would a plant look like if it was affected by a disease? So we all know what a healthy plant looks like, but if a plant was affected by a disease, how would it look different? Pause the presentation, come up with some answers, and when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. So pause now. There are a number of characteristics that are symptoms or signs that a plant has a disease. They can range from things like stunted growth. Uh, fully, grown, fully grown plants can have things like spots on leaves. They can have areas of decay. There can be growths or lumps on them. We can also have stems or leaves that are misshapen or malformed. Discoloration is a very common one. And of course, we can actually see the presence of pests and things moving on the actual plant. And these are all different things that occur with plants that have a disease. In this lesson, we're going to look at the symptoms. We're going to recall a cause and symptoms for some specific plant diseases that you may have already covered. We're going to go through different methods that we use to identify what particular disease a plant has, depending on the symptoms. And then we can look at the impact of nitrate and magnesium ion deficiency on plants. So what can affect the plant? Well, just like animals, any pathogen can infect a plant. So the bacteria, the viruses, or fungi are all perfectly capable of infecting plants. There are also a number of insect species that would also have a serious impact on a plant. How would we know what disease it is? Well, there's three main ways we can research this. Number one is we simply look up the symptoms in a book or website. An important note in the specification, the looking up in a book and looking up on a website are actually done as the same point. What this suggests is that in an exam setting, that if they said give two ways in which you could identify which disease a plant had, if you put down look up on a book or look up on a website, it would actually count as the same point. So I'm strongly recommending you learn all three of these. Uh, so look up on a book or websites number one. Take the pathogen to a lab for testing and identifications, number two, uh, using as DNA sequence, for example. And number three is we could use a monoclonal antibody test. There are specific plant diseases that you could be asked about. Rose black spot and tobacco mosaic virus are covered in another presentation all about the different pathogens. Please feel free to go back and look over that if you want to. Uh, and then, of course, we have our insects in the form of aphids, which are small little insects that actually live on the outside of plant. And you can see them moving around. Um, they are notorious for being a vector for disease. So they actually carry diseases between plants, which is why they cause so many problems. For rose black spot and tobacco mosaic virus, you do need to know what causes them, either a fungus or a virus. You need to know the symptoms, how they're transmitted, and there are some additional notes, which again, you should memorize because you can be asked specifically about them in the exam. And for the aphid, you just need to be aware that it can cause wilting and discoloration of leaves, and they're a vector for other diseases. So quite often, plants that are infected with aphids will have symptoms of other diseases. What else can affect the plant? Well, plants aren't just affected by diseases. They can also be affected by a shortage of mineral ions. And there's two specific minerals you need to be able to talk about. Plants use nitrates for making proteins, which they use for growth. If a plant has a shortage of nitrate ions, then the plant will have a stunted growth. If, however, the plant has yellow leaves, the yellow leaves are normally due to a lack of chlorophyll, and a lack of chlorophyll is associated with a lack of magnesium. So we can look at the plant, and depending on which characteristics it has, we can make some indication of which mineral ion may be missing. Financially, plant diseases and insects, like aphids, costs over 200 billion pound per year to the global economy which is obviously quite a considerable amount of money now we can use a range of chemicals pesticides and insecticides and so forth to help reduce the impact of these things but they obviously have their own problems associated with environmental impact some scientists have been arguing that we should be allowed to insert new sections of dna into plants and crops and make them immune to pathogens and insects so they uh, have sort of natural immunity built into them. 
just gather a few thoughts. It's it's not something you have to memorize, but it could be something they ask you for your opinion on in the exam. So it's worth having one or two valid points. Again, if you can go away, research and come up with a couple of research papers or books that actually give you specific information that you can use, that looks even better. And just to finish off, all you have to do is sketch the table out with the four headings below, symptoms, how to identify the disease causes and specific examples, and then write down as much information as you can under each one, but you have to write the fewest number of words possible. So we want as much information with the fewest number of words.